Yes. Okay. Oh, thank you. All right. Sorry about that. No worries. Where so, are you? First, I'm in Georgia. You're oh, in Georgia. Cool. We're in Georgia. Uh, right smack in the middle between Augusta and Macon. Oh, okay. Oh, awesome. Okay. Very cool. Nice. In the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the first omen. Uh, tell me how this movie came to be. We got really lucky, honestly. We were having a meeting with the studio in and around the time that the production company had given us the script. So we kind of, unbeknownst to us, we were talking to 20th Century and just kind of telling them how big of fans we were of horror films and the kind of movies that we wanted to make. And we had been sent this script that they were producing. They didn't really even know it, so... It was kind of a, a happy accident in a way. Yeah, everything kind of fell into place, which was really, I feel like, a, a good sign for us. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's a good omen, huh? Yeah, yeah exactly. right? Yeah. <laughs> right, so so tell us about the story that takes us before Damien is, is born, correct? Yeah, this is a, a prequel that starts in 1971. And, you know, I think by the end of the film, it's kind of a fun journey to discover how our film's going to dovetail in with the 1976 version. Um, but the overall, the, the story is about this young novitiate named Margaret who moves to Rome and she has the intention of taking her vows. And while she's there, she meets this young girl at an orphanage um, and starts to discover this dark conspiracy around her. Um, and then, yeah. And you start to find out how that connects to the original. First, we've got to talk about the trailer. Mm -hmm. I love the trailer and I love that it's just bits and pieces of glimpses. It doesn't give the whole movie away, which these days is rare. <laughs> yes. we, we're such big spoiler people. You know, I, in a perfect world, I don't know anything about a movie before I go see it. So we were so, so grateful that that initial teaser really just set the tone for what the movie is and not much else. You know, we're so thankful that it didn't reveal a lot of plot because I think there are a lot of really great spoilers in the film. And um, yes, we're so happy you felt the same way. We, we loved the way it set the tone for the movie. Yeah. And it's kind of, it's it, what was so fun is that you get 100% vibes, you know? So you get drawn in by the world first, which is, I think... I think really important, especially when you have a lot of preconceived notions about what a prequel to a horror franchise might be. Um, so I think it was nice to kind of start to wipe away that baggage. Well, it, it looks fantastic and the cinematography is is amazing. Thank you. But at the end of the trailer, if I'm not mistaken, there is a little quote from the original movie backwards. That is what that is, right? That's right. Yeah, that's um, Damien, It's All For You from the 1976 version backwards. I was making sure I wasn't hearing things. So. Oh, no. were, were you able to pick it out as yeah. her voice? That's amazing. Yeah, that's cool. And I love that they're, you know, like we said, the, the trailer doesn't give away a whole lot, but it does give away that, that there is a moment that pays homage to the original, the, you know, it's for you scene. Yeah. Which is, I think, great. How did you pay homage but show us something new in the that scene? Yeah, that's a that's a really wonderful question because I think that's something something just overall that we talked a lot about because we were such huge fans of the original Omen growing up, is that it's delicate territory to be in right now. You know, you don't want to take advantage of people's childhood memories or nostalgia or disappoint them. And so you have to do something new but you also want to be in the omen universe so that scene i think is so effective in the original because the violence and the horror comes out of absolute nowhere and from a person that you least expect and so the second somebody goes up high anywhere in our movie you know exactly what's going to happen so we can't the horror can't be that flavor for us you know so we were talking a lot with our actor Ishtar um, and she was saying, you know, I don't know if my character is wanting to do this. Like, I think she knows she has to, but really physically and mentally does not want to do it. And I think she's really frightened. And her, she does play this, this somewhat innocent childlike character. So to have her almost scared like a, like a small child up there, 
I think brings a lot of tragedy to the scene, which becomes horrific. What, what would you say? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, I think we wanted to kind of look at it from the perspective of kind of the psychological effect of somebody committing that act. You know, in the, the original 76 version, she's quite joyous, you know, almost rapturous. And then also to really focus on the psychological effects of witnessing an act like that. So that was kind of our way of, like you said, paying homage to, to the original, but doing so through kind of the lens of, of our film and what we want to say with it. Right, right. So what uh, else can fans of the franchise expect? Well, there's a very specific tone to the horror in the Omen franchise. Uh, and I think we definitely, with some of the deaths in this film and some of the imagery, tried to capture the spirit of kind of the horror in those films. I think it's something very specific that fans of the franchise will hopefully register in this film. Yeah. And I think one of the things that was also important to us um, when, wa when we were talking a lot about the original Omen is that it's really a psychological thriller and it's told really from the perspective of this one man and it's really rooted in that man's character. And so that was something that was really important to us is rooting all of the horror within this one lead character and slowly discovering it through her perspective um, and letting a lot of the suspense, the psychological suspense be really what makes your muscles tighten throughout the entire film. <laughs> what were some of your main objectives with portraying horror, but at the same time elevating it? Well, I think, you know, a lot of this horror has to do specifically with the female perspective. I think we were really surprised to read that the lead was going to be this young novitiate. And I think a lot of this film is talking about, you know, the main question you have when you watch the first, when you watch the 1976 Omen is where did Damien come from? So you know that this movie is going to be about birth, right? And so a lot of this has to do with the female body. It has to do with the dismemberment and the, the, I guess, the objectifying of the female body. So a lot of our, our horror stems from, like I said, the, the psychological suspense, but also body horror that has to do with the female form. Um, and that was really, it was important to us to, to be able to show that in a humanized way because I don't think that's something that I've really seen a lot in horror growing up and something that alienated me as a young girl watching horror and something that I was craving. What was the most difficult aspect of filming? Kind of, well, in the macro sense, you know, going to Rome was so, so crucial for us. You know, I think filming on location gives this great feeling of authenticity. It's very much in the spirit of the original Omen. But Rome is a tricky place to film in because you're basically walking around in a living museum. It's such a historic city. And because of that, they're very protective. And, you know, shocker, when you're making a movie about the Antichrist, churches are not going to be very hospitable to you. So, you know, imagine our surprise. We get there and you can basically extend either arm out and touch a beautiful, gorgeous church. None of them wanted anything to do with us. Mm -hmm. So um, so that was tough. I mean, you know, we had set all these really great, we had these set pieces in churches and people were just like, no way. And uh, you, you realize the power of the church uh, when you're in Rome with the Vatican. You know, it's a pretty uh, all-encompassing influence. So that was certainly something we had to adapt to. But I think, you know, ultimately it was, it was really, we were so happy we filmed there because you can't kind of overestimate the effect that filming in Rome had kind of on the tone of the movie and kind of capturing the spirit of the original in the seventies. It was so, it almost got comical when it came to the churches because we really, really needed to shoot in a church for many important scenes. And every church we went into, we probably saw how many churches? 30, 30 40, 40 churches. churches. Yeah. And it almost got, you know, we were shooting after um, Gucci. Gucci. And there's this one church I was just in love with. It had the most beautiful altar. And and the man he was showing us said, Lady Gaga and Adam Driver just got married here. And he was so proud. And I was like, that's beautiful. Can we shoot here? He was like, no, <laughs> you cannot. <laughs> so. I can imagine. I mean, I imagine that would be, be difficult. 
Um, but where did you end up filming those scenes? We had to go to deconsecrated churches mm -hmm. about an hour and a half outside of Rome. So we basically had to get as far away from kind of the influence of the Catholic Church and, and the Vatican as possible. And you go to these churches that are deconsecrated. And um, yeah, they were the ones that allowed us to film there. Yeah. So it's really beautiful when you see the film, you know, I, I think you can't tell any difference, but just know that we are out in the middle of nowhere filming in that church. <laughs> right, right. I can I can understand why they might give you a little bit of trouble. Yeah. But I'm glad that it did get filmed because I have high expectations for it. And as somebody who is a fan of the original film, yeah, you know, it's I've always like you said, where did he come from? And it's great that y'all could take that classic franchise and expand it instead of, you know, doing a reboot or remake like so many others are doing right now. But I'm, I'm very excited to see it. And, you know, and religious horror has a way of getting under my skin. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm sure it will have a large effect on people. And your cast is amazing. Yeah. I mean, there are just so many that you know how did, how did you do you choose who you know would play the roles when you cast well it's great you know it started with watching the 76 and i think you know gregory peck that cast elevated the horror film and kind of put it on a different tier because of how incredible the performances are in that movie so we knew right away that was if we were going to try to do justice to the omen we had to do it with the cast first and foremost so we just you know you get you get a list of all these characters and you just go for the best actors you can possibly find and we got super super lucky with this one because so many of the actors that we were at the top of our list you know were happy enough to join the project yeah yeah absolutely like i mean it w we really lucked out we've been a huge fan of of ralph innocence for a long time and he was so perfect in picking up the mantle of the Patrick Troughton character. And it, I think, was so um, invested in in keeping that spirit alive. And then, I mean, sorry, I could talk on and on about our cast just because I think we were so, so insanely lucky that people of such prestige wanted and were willing to take part in, in this material and make this material their reality for a few months. I think it's really... I think it's really special, but also speaks to the power of the original Omen, you know, and the performances in that film as well. Yeah, and even with somebody like Ralph Innocent, you, know, you mentioning that you wanted to kind of know how Damien was born. I think something that was so interesting about what Ralph did with Father Brennan is it'd be easy to do a mimicry or a caricature of Brennan. But, you know, in the 76 version, he's pretty unhinged and has this religious fervor. And Ralph, what he decided to do with the characters, basically say, okay, what is his origin as a priest? How does he arrive to that version of Father Brennan that we see in the original? And he did an incredible job of, of kind of charting that path to get to the 76 version, but never kind of trying to mimic what we saw in that film. Yeah. So it was really exciting. I'm so glad that y'all took that angle, you know, that, that perspective on it, because... You know, things can't be recreated that are that iconic, but to expand on them in a way that both honors the character and the film is it's impressive. It's a great, great thing. So thank yeah, you for thank saying you. that. I think that's really kind of you. Thank you. Yeah, we're so, so protective of those horror classics. And like you said, I think to try to capture the spirit or essence or just do a remake of it feels like such a fool's errand I just don't think it's the right way to go about it so it's just not in my abilities as a director you know that's a perfectly directed film yeah but... yeah. yeah so I think like I said you can only hope to contribute to it or to kind of pave something along that path and, and kind of do justice to it so that's what we're trying to do with this one I hope you dig it <laughs> oh I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure I will um <laughs> But you're right, the, the whole remake thing is, is is so overdone. And, you know, besides, of course, the first omen, you know, Pet Cemetery did their prequel well. And I'm hoping that we will see it start trends go that way. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, by any chance, are, are y'all planning another horror movie? You to say. We just don't know which one, but we we love horror movies. You, <laughs> if you put money down on it being a horror film, I think you'd get some in return. We it's live in horror. Yeah. You can bet on that horse. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, I, I sincerely hope that we do get to see more, um, especially because, like I said, it's y'all taking something cherished and, you know, expanding the story, but at the same time introduced new to it. Mm-hmm. And fans will appreciate that, you know, because it's, if it's cherished, it's cherished. There's nothing you can do but expand the story to pay homage to it correctly. And I think that's what this movie does. Oh, thank oh, you so thank much. You yeah. Yeah. Like you said, I hope our love for the film comes out and us trying to contribute to it and try to try to do something new with it. So yeah, that's really nice of you to say. Yeah. That means a lot. So if you will, um, what message exactly are you hoping that most uh, our friends will take away from this film? Well, first off, I hope they have a lot of fun with the movie because, you know, I I had so much fun as a kid watching this movie. And like, that's, I think the the worst offender is when, when you try to expand upon a franchise um, and make it boring. Yeah. Like that would be the worst thing in the world. Yeah, nothing worse than a movie that takes itself too seriously. I think. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. And then I think, you know, something that we're really proud of is, is the, the female body horror of it all. I think we've taken some really big swings when it comes to horror through a female perspective, you know, and I'm, I mean, we're both really proud of that. I think we really pushed for it and the studio supported us and um, it, it felt, it felt really good. It feels scary, but it feels really good to have done, you know, and I really hope that that horror fans appreciate that. Right, and I, I'm sure that we'll expect it. The trailer is amazing, and I've you know seen clips and things, and it's I've got very high hopes for it. Um, I'm gonna ask y'all to do something something a little difficult. Y'all had to each pick five words to describe the film. What would they be? Juicy. Well, you started on a different type of word. <laughs> Do you start it on? I don't know. I think I'd say it's subversive for sure. Okay, we got juicy, we got subversive. Mm. It's fun. Fun, dangerous. Now we have one more. You got to pick it wisely. Titanic. No, everybody's going to think that already. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> um feral. feral yeah that's a great one yeah great choices <laughs> yeah, that definitely sells it <laughs> juicy feral <laughs> and subversive, subversive. Fun. that's a catch-all hopefully that's appealing <laughs> definitely definitely um one question if y'all had like a dream movie to do what would it be Mm. Oof. Well, okay. So one of our favorite films that we drew a lot of inspiration from for this film, even I don't know if you'll see it in the film, but is this movie called Vampire? It's have you seen it? The Carl Drive? It's been a long time, but I have seen it. I think that is one of the most interesting, almost borderline experimental films that has not had its day. I feel like this is one of the the, this is like a huge horror film. I feel like it's a horror classic. Yeah, and it's one of those movies too that's made in the 1930s and it still feels just as relevant and impactful today. So we we saw that while we were writing this and thought, man, this would be an incredible film to, to revisit. Yeah. Well, I think it's, it's been long enough that it would definitely be due a, a revamp. Yeah, yeah I like that. <laughs> Vampire revamp. I'm, yeah. I'm going to steal that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Um, like I said, I, I can't wait. And, you know, just the cast alone and the cinematography, you know, the glimpses that we've seen and, you know, the story, It's I think it's going to be a hit. You know, just, you know, in my opinion. Well, thank awesome. you. Yeah, thank you very we're, much. We're certainly hoping yeah. so. So thanks for speaking that in for us. Yeah. <laughs> and and being that it is kind of a religious supernatural horror, did anything spooky go on on set by any chance? 
there are quite a few things where you think, well, that was strange, you know? And I think there's, um, it, you expect it, right? Because when you're, you're saying like, okay, we're going to make this movie, you have to believe in the reality in order to make it. So I think by opening that door, you're welcoming stuff in, right? So I think we, we made it through fairly unscathed, but there was strange stuff like, you know, we needed um, artwork that depicted hell and we couldn't get anything cleared. And there was this one day early in our trip to Italy where Tim and I um, had a day off and we went driving and we went to this small town um, called Orvieto. And we were just wandering around and we went into a church and they had these beautiful, you know, tableaus of the, the apocalypse and the antichrist. And, and it was really gorgeous and we didn't think anything of it. Well, then four months later, turns out the only artwork in all of Italy we can get the rights for is the artwork from that church in that small wow. town. It's just, And we were just like, that's just too much of a coincidence. And that's not spooky. That's not like what you'd share around a campfire. But yeah, I remember when we were first starting out, we were doing a rehearsal for a really important scene. And Ralph Ennison, who's playing Father Brennan, was attacked by a dog yeah. on his way to the rehearsal. Yeah. And especially because he was playing Father Brennan, that that set us off on a really strange tone. We were filming one scene and there's circumference from the, you know. Yeah, that, yeah. There, there's a, we were filming in this piazza and um, for some reason, all of us just felt very off and, and I was having a hard time and the actors were having a hard time and equipment was having a hard time. And uh, we found out a few days later that the circumference of the piazza was like 666 feet or something yeah there's you know yeah little things like that where you're like oh that makes sense <laughs> that is creepy though it's yeah. very creepy yeah and the, it, it, did the dog hurt him or is it just hurt him but he was able to make a swift recovery he is a strong man yeah wow wow that's yeah. crazy yeah yeah, as well. Well, I think I think that's amazing. And um, if you had to give a message to fans of the original film, what would you say about this film? Oh, I hope we we did you all proud and didn't disappoint anybody. And yeah, yeah, like we said before, I mean, I just hope our love for the original shines through, and you know that we're able to to contribute to that franchise and that world. And I think, like you said, I think there's a lot of mystery surrounding Damien's origins. And I think your mind can go to all different places. And I, I hope that, you know, we satisfy those expectations. I think, you know, what we created hopefully does justice to what people are open for when they think, where did Damien come from? Yeah. And I think, you know, well, like it was like we were talking about, it's important to make a movie that can stand on its own and kind of has its own message. We also hope that it really invigorates people to go back and watch the 1976 version again, because I mean, this yeah, generation needs going. to know about it and keep yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. Too, go to Final Conflict. Go to See Sam Neill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, from what I've seen, it, it looks fantastic, and and I think a lot of people are going to be very pleased. You know, especially those that are fans of the original, and if not, you know, they're going to have to rewatch it either way. So that's great for for that film and yours. Yeah. But I, I think I think it's gonna be good. Thank you. Well, I appreciate y'all taking time to talk with me. You don't have to be afraid. God has great plans for you. This child is his way. There's this girl at the orphanage. I think that she really needs someone to look out for her. Carlita suffers from a touch of madness. You must be very careful, Margaret. Bad things will start to happen around her. Evil things. 
It's all for you. No, no, don't. What does any of this have to do with Carlita? This church has maintained power for thousands of years. They will stop at nothing to keep it that way. How do you control people who no longer believe? You create something to fear. I believe the girl is to be the mother. Mother of, of what? It's the mark of the devil. Hey! It's not real. 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 Who said that? This is very real.